Okay, it's Saturday, August the 7th. Obviously, someone next door is having a birthday party, <laughs> so it might get a little loud, but I wanted to capture the garden today and document all the progress and all the beauty, um, and I have a little sliver of sunshine. It's uh, sort of a cloudy day, so this is, this is the time to get out there and get some footage. I'm going to start here as I usually do with my potted plants, which are in bloom. And we've got some marigolds, and we've got a zinnia, and some teddy bear sunflowers. They're adorable. We had another teddy bear sunflower that we put out on the front porch. It was too cute for words. Okay. Now for the, the main garden. I was hoping Bobo would make an appearance, but he hasn't been around since this morning. All right, so we'll start over in garden bed one. foxglove is just getting fuller and fuller and I think uh, I don't know if we'll see a bloom this year probably next year like I've mentioned in other videos it's a biennial plant that usually puts on the foliage the first year and then blooms a big spike of flowers the second although technically this is its second year since I grew it from seed last year I still think it might bloom next year so that'll stay in the ground and it'll come up next spring. Um, the three cucumber seedlings that I raised and planted are just... <laughs> they look like one big plant, which is fantastic. And we've gotten so many cucumbers off of this plant, off these plants, I should say, and now it's on its second, its second uh, crop. And they're just about ready to be picked, but there are a couple small ones too, so it's really just quite the producer and this spot ended up being a very good spot to choose because garden bed one gets a lot of shade and I noticed the cucumbers really they wilt under that hot sun so it still gets sunshine but it gets a little shade too so so that's excellent it's doing really well they are doing really well here is my little fence garden with my lupines and cosmoses which have been, you know, die-bombed by all these, I'm sure you can see all these apples. Everything's sort of been getting die-bombed right now. Um, they're everywhere. <laughs> um, but I don't think it broke off anything over here. So far I've been pretty lucky. Um, however, the cat has disturbed these, uh, these plants a little bit. This one on the left is the most robust and these are perennial for a few years, they say, so I'm hoping they survive through the winter, and then maybe next spring we'll see something happening here. Now the cosmoses are not perennial. These are annual, and these, these are real straggly and not the finest specimens, so we have one little bloom. Um, wasn't exactly what I was going for, but um, still, I'm really excited to see what maybe next year this little patch of lupines will do. If it blooms, uh, those blooms are stunning on a lupine. Okay, turning our attention back to my favorite bed right now, bed number two. Actually, oh, try to back up and give you the full picture. And I'll get in close and personal. The kale has been doing fantastic. It hasn't even really been wilting much during the heat of the day. It's because we haven't had, I mean, we've had hot days, but it hasn't been, it hasn't been too bad. The marigolds are, are going off. This first plant over here was the first to bloom. 
um, but now all the other little um, smaller plants that weren't as robust as seedlings, they're catching up pretty fast and we're starting to see just tons of blooms there, which is really exciting. Um, I'm starting to cut the, the dead heads off and save them for seeds for next year, so that'll be cool. We've got the, uh, the basil plants here, which I've been picking and using. <coughs> And which one first? I guess the zinnia has. <clears throat> Look at those zinnias. And yes, it's just in all its glory right now. I've deadheaded a few of them, but I haven't had to take off too many, honestly. They last a really long time, and they are just... What do you want? I want to say crowd pleasers. <laughs> I couldn't be more thrilled with this, with this plant. The butterfly bush is still still in bloom. Back up a little bit to try to capture it here. Such a nice backdrop to the to the flowers. I couldn't ask for a better backdrop. It's like the spot. I can't stop taking pictures and video of it. <laughs> This is new. My Cosmos patch is starting to come alive. And uh, I'm really excited. <laughs> what else can I say? I find I can never have enough flowers. I really like the white ones. We had one dark purple one, but it didn't last long. Notice these get knocked around with the wind a little bit. Oh, there's a purple one. So that'll be a nice color. But I have a lot of that color in the zinnias, so I have to say the white and the pale pink are really are really uh, nice accompaniments. Uh, the teddy bear sunflower here bloomed a while ago. Um, this main flower um, is sort of fading a little bit because it was the first one to come out and it lasted a really long time. Um, but all these little babies are... <laughs> coming out of it so I think that's that's so cool um, it's really just covered in, in blooms all around those are really cool sunflowers it's a dwarfing variety so they're meant to be very small and they bloom a lot quicker than a regular conventional sunflower <clears throat> the cannabis plant is is awesome <laughs> I have to say, we might have a female here. They talk about looking for the hairs, which I'm seeing. I'm seeing it. Um, I think that's focusing in. But yeah, if you see the little seed, the little seed pouches in the budding area, that's supposed to be an indication of a male. But if you see the white hairs, coming out, which I am seeing. They say that's the sign of a female, so we might have a little bumper crop of fresh cannabis, which would be really cool. Now, I don't smoke cannabis anymore, if I can help it. I usually uh, use the tinctures, but I might have to make a special exception. <laughs> because that is too cool. I've wanted to grow cannabis my whole life. I grew it as a child. <laughs> Those who know me can attest to this. I almost started a fire in my closet. I'm not proud to say, I shouldn't have mentioned that, but um, with the heat lamp, it was an accident, but um, obviously I gave up on that dream for a long time and then I just put this in the garden. We had a seed and I had a couple seedlings. This was the only one that survived and, and bam. I think I might have been gifted something that I've wanted for for such a long time. 
sure if that's focusing in enough, but yeah. So far, so good. We might have a female, oh my gosh. Now, this is the Mexican sunflower. This is what I was so excited to share and was saying how it was really gonna probably like overtake the zinnias. It's, it's got blooms all over it. We've got a bloom here and then we've got buds just ready to pop all over it. This one is, um, is a spent flower and I'm gonna leave it on and let it dry because I really wanna collect the seeds from this plant. And then over there you can see another bloom and another bud. And then really there's just, there's just buds all over this side, all these side shoots. Um, let's see if I can just yeah, get a little close up here. I think this is gonna be a late bloomer, which is what they say, I mean, that's normal. And it's gonna be stunning. I mean, there's gonna be flowers coming out of it all over. And if I back up a little, you'll get a sense of how tall this, this plant is. It's, that is one plant with all these shoots and it's it's going to be covered in flowers which isn't that a beautiful flower yeah the bees and the hummingbirds really love them so couldn't be happier about that here's the back side of the zinnia patch They're just lovely. I think this one variety, this one plant has put out a few of these blooms. These are the, the, um, the giant purple, and they're like these little balls. Um, I noticed this plant has put out, see this, this bloom here and this bloom over here are on the same plant, so. I had a mixed seed packet and I obviously got one of those seeds in there, which is so cool. I really like that variety, but they're all really lovely. <laughs> I mean, how can you choose? And the bees are loving everything, as usual. Okay, so down here, the Shasta daisy plant is pretty much at the end of its uh, blooming cycle. There is one just very random bloom down here, but um, other than these two down here, the plant is pretty much going dormant, it seems. So I've deadheaded it, and I'm continuing to water it, but I need to actually research what I'm supposed to do, if I'm just supposed to let it wilt, or if I'm supposed to cut it back to the ground. It is a perennial, so this plant will come back next year, so that's exciting. Its neighbor is the pot of um, teddy bear sunflowers. And they are, some of them are um, sort of past their prime, but I, again, I'm trying to save seeds. So I'm gonna let this plant do its thing. And then I'll dry the seeds and um, have some free seeds for next year. I love these teddy bear sunflowers. I'm gonna always grow them, I think. I've decided that today is the day that this kale patch has to go. Um, I haven't had a chance to get to it, I've been super busy, um, but it needs to go. It's starting to get powdery mildew and I don't want it spreading to the rest of the plants over here. So um, it's just these really tall plants, um, but I have a couple smaller kales like this, that one there, these, these are all going to stay, but these big ones, they're past their prime and the plant is telling me it's, it's ready. It's been bolting, that's what these flowers or it's been sending up bolts for, for weeks, actually probably months at this point. I've just been chopping them off and it's encouraged these plants to bush out, but they're done. They need to, they need to be put to rest. So I'll salvage all that I can and get it into the freezer. And then I'll make room here. I think I'm gonna put parsley here. My two parsley seedlings here are getting bigger and they're ready to be transplanted. So, and they're gonna last all through the winter and I wanna put them in a sunny place, which is perfect right here. So I'll probably work on that today or tomorrow. Um, something else, look at the zucchini plant has just completely taken off. This started happening after I, I took down a kale plant that was shading it 
and now that it's getting more sun, it made all the difference. And we actually have a baby zucchini. Now I can't say whether or not that will get pollinated. Sometimes they don't. And then you don't really get the fruit, but um, I'm really hoping we do. I would love to get a zucchini off this plant. Um, it's massive right now and looking really healthy, so I'm super excited. Um, my rosemary seedlings are doing fantastic. And mom, your moon lilies, I didn't realize that these are massive plants. I mean, I gotta get them out of this pot because the roots are already starting to come out the bottom. I probably shouldn't have put two in one pot. Uh, so yeah, I need to find out more about these plants. Maybe I'll just get them into a larger pot um, so that I can overwinter them in the garage if they are warm loving plants. But anyway, our tomatoes are about to start. Well, they are already starting to blush a little bit, so the pigmentation is starting to change. So it should not be long till we have some tomatoes. Despite the heat wave earlier in the season, we have quite a few fruit. The other day I cleared out some of the grape leaves that were up here because the tomatoes had all grown so tall they were getting shaded and I really opened that up and now all the tomatoes are still getting that sunshine they love and they're quite the little producers so I'm really excited about that. Moving along to the onion patch. I tried to memorize the name of these, these onions over here. Um, I forget. <laughs> but they are supposed to get as large as softballs. So right now you can see they're, they're bulbing up a little bit. So I'm really happy about that. Um, this is the largest one here. Oh look, there's an apple here for scale. <laughs> Um, but I think they're going to take a while longer to get that big, if they ever do get that big. But even now, I mean, you could eat them now, but I'm going to leave them in the ground, obviously, and see how large I can get them to go. Um, I did not amend this bed very well. These were a gift from the neighbor, and they were given to me at a time where I wasn't ready for them. So I just squeezed them into my schedule and got them into the ground. But I would have liked to put some of the cow manure under each bulb which my neighbor also gave me. In fact, I didn't put the cow manure under the onion patch here, but every other plant here pretty much has a big pile of cow manure <laughs> in the hole where it's growing from. So um, it might be why my zinnias and all my other plants in garden bed number two are so robust and healthy. They're just really thriving and green and vibrant. So anyway, we're still getting onions. That's all that matters. I couldn't be happier about these parsley plants. Like I said, they're hard to germinate, and I had given up on my germination. Uh, and then I, these two little plants came up. I thought they were weeds, but they weren't. And I realized that after a little while, and then got them potted up in these pots. And once parsley looks about this size, you know it's, it's going to make it. So I, I need to get it into the ground and... Um, foster it because it's going to be a producer through the winter and into next spring which is so fantastic. Um, one other thing I wanted to share. I used to think these were blackberries but they're not. They're marion berries and they turn they turn like black or like a really dark purple and they are I have to say some of the most delicious berries if you get them at the right time that focusing? Um, yeah. Oh, there's one up there. See that one right there? That's gonna be a primo berry in like another day or two. <laughs> um, I'm gonna squeeze through here a little bit. And this is that tomato plant that I threw into the ground. I didn't have any more space. And I'm actually getting some tomatoes on it. That's so exciting.
Here's another vantage point from behind the tomatoes. And the grape leaves, which are prolific and really lovely. Okay. I think that's pretty much all. I do have some seedlings down below, um, some survivors, some Shasta daisies, some English daisies, and one cosmos, <laughs> which I'll probably just throw in this garden bed number two. Um, but yeah, everything is at the peak of the season. Um, some things are starting to fade a little, some things are just coming into their own. The zinnias are holding strong this whole time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's just a little bit of work to do in the kale patch. <laughs> okay, so that's the update. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I love you guys. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.